let's touch on biotechnology and of course genetically modified uh, food uh, a lot of controversy that is uh, filtered through and uh, some are still very divided on whether there are a lot of health issues uh, at play here let's start off with your thoughts on this and why you think this is a fantastic answer and solution to Africa's lack of food security well, I think uh, um, my conviction is uh, first because um, my scientists, I, I was in, I have been involved in the uh, the science of genetically modified crops, and I believe there is truly no uh, health issues or um, issues that the food may have something that you cause at um, health concern. I'm convinced as a scientist, that's not the case. So also looking at what have been happening in other countries that have been involved in this over 10 years, people in the United States and other countries and recently in the developing countries like China, uh, Latin America, um, India, the recent country that's really moving very fast on adoption of the technology on food and fiber and cotton, South Africa, um, Egypt recently, the commercialized uh, maize and uh, uh, there is no evidence that truly this technology cannot make a big contribution to developing mm. countries. And there is no food safety uh, demonstration that these technologies have caused either uh, food to human, human, human problem or environmental damage. If anything, they have demonstrated clear benefits to the environment, clear benefit to human, clear benefit to increasing production, clear benefit to, cursing, to cutting losses to insect and pest. And that's why I do believe that uh, there is opportunity for us in Africa that we should be considering and uh, using. Mm. Well, Florence, can you with certainty say that uh, genetically modified food is not a health risk? With certainty? Um, I, I, sorry, I didn't get your question. Can you with certainty, uh, certainty say that uh, genetically modified food is, does not pose a health risk at all down the line? Yes, I can uh, say that because I know the, the foods are tested and they are regulated through government regulatory system. Even when the, 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 the main uh, uh, producers are private sector companies, the regulatory systems are with the, with the governments. And I do not think the governments will be able to jeopardize the life and the health of their people mm. actually to allow these uh, genetically modified foods to be, uh, to be commercialized if they cause any health hazards. And uh, developed countries, actually, this, we can say that this, uh, like the, the case where we say there's dumping in Africa, definitely these uh, foods have been more eaten in America, in Canada, in developed countries before they even come to Africa. And for example, in the US, there are three regulatory agencies that really regulate these food crops. And so, and you look at other countries like Australia, even uh, uh, other countries which are developed or industrial countries and others are following up a very rigorous regulatory system. And so far, there have been absolutely no, no proof. There's uh, claims, there is heresy, but there's absolutely no scientific uh, demonstrated data to show that there has been caused any harm to human beings. Yangaka, what is your view on genetically modified group? It's a very controversial uh, food, uh, topic, of course, and it seems that 40% of U.S. cropland is around is, is genetically modified. 10% of the global uh, cropland is genetically modified, and uh, the reason that the U.S. has embarked on such a big strategy is because there's a lot of incentives coming through from government. Yeah, there is, and you know, I, I'd probably say that uh, given that it is uh, controversial even in the U.S. and Europe as well, but it's especially controversial in a place like Africa, where food security is just so integral to uh, government policy across the continent. I mean, I think it's interesting, you know, uh, if you look at, for example, the recent inflation numbers that came out in South Africa relative to the EMEA, the Europe, Middle East, Africa uh, class set, for example, countries like Hungary and Israel, et cetera, part of the reason that inflation has actually been trending down in South Africa has been the record harvest that we've had of grain crops in the last three years. Not the case in places like Russia and Eastern Europe as well. So there is some case to be made about food security being provided by GM foods. Mm. Uh, well, you were talking about, uh, Florence, you are talking about uh, increased yield and you are talking about some of the benefits. What other benefits are there for the consumer out there? Um, as we said, relatively divided in terms of what the health risks could be. We also had the Green Revolution Forum that was underway in Ghana earlier this year. Also just keeping in mind that a lot of the African countries are very averse to GM food and of course really following in the tracks of the likes of the European Union. 
Well, I, will not, I'll, I really wouldn't uh, say that this kind of opinion is accurate. If you look at uh, every religion right now, we are having a, 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 a I think first and foremost, the Africa have been looking at the wrong direction because if your direction is Europe has rejected uh, the foods that increase production, so Africa should reject. We are not the same. Uh, we are on the same playing ground. Le the rejection of Europe is not based on uh, on on on, uh, on health hazard or anything. It's based on the fact that they have surplus. And they don't need technology that maybe increase their food. They have no hunger. They have no starvation. And so we, you can't use the arguments of Europe. Uh, the other bit, which is also a misunderstanding, is this claim that if African countries uh, embrace uh, GM technology, they are not going to export to Europe. We are not producing any crops that I know that we export to Europe. The things we export to, to Europe are mainly flowers, horticultural crops, and um, uh, uh, things that uh, are not have anything to do with the food security. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the technologies are focusing, they are focusing on, on, on maize or cotton or canola or that, Africa is not in that business. And so we are really not going to have challenge. Our main trading blocks now is within the region. The East African region, the Comesa, there's more trade going on within African trading blocks, the ECOWAS, the SADAC. Mm -hmm. And so we shouldn't be really saying that if we embrace, for example, GM technology and uh, have technologies like BT, which are proven and tested and proven and in, in application. But that said, Florence, countries. there's also a lot um, of reports that uh, we've seen a lot of health issues coming to the fore and a lot of these crops not, uh, you know, putting out the yield that they're supposed to. So there's also a lot of issues and a lot of controversial topics that have come to the fore and a lot of negative uh, news coming through, especially for the likes of Monsanto, DuPont as well, those big seed producers that they're not actually coming clean with the health hazards. How do you respond to that? I think we should isolate issues between, uh, uh, between the issues of big companies and the technology. And personally, I'm not for any company. I'm not there to promote any company. I'm there to promote the technology. Because the technology, like now we've got cell phone technology which have been invented in other countries. We are benefiting from this technology in Africa. And if we just rejected because it came from Nokia or from whatever, we'll be losing out. And the same argument, there are many things we, we, we use, aeroplanes, we don't make them, we use them. There are many technologies in Africa that we, we use that are made by one or two companies out there. Microsoft, uh, we are using all that is made by one company. But so we don't ingest, uh, uh, Florence, with all due respect, these uh, products that you're alluding to, it's, it doesn't directly translate into something that we need to ingest. So obviously this is about food and this is why it's become such a sticky topic at this point in time. And many are saying that the health hazards are very uh, controversial and, and the long-term impact that it could have on the environment could also be a very big issue. I'm glad you are talking about calling it controversy because truly there's no data to show or to prove this. It's pure controversy and there are many things which are controversial. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about the benefits to the environment. There is clear data to show right now. Go to ISA website and show how many uh, tons of uh, toxic chemicals that will be going to the environment if you are not using BT cotton. And so if you balance the benefits and the risk, you realize there's less risk with the, with the GM technology in terms of benefits. And these are clear, there is data to show other than controversy. But the problem more important to me is the opportunity to increase food production. The opportunity that many of the smallholder farmers, uh, and we have seen this, uh, can actually use this technology without necessarily uh, having to revert to complicated mm. mixing of chemicals or lead and right, because the technology is in the seed. Look at China. China is moving very fast. They've got 7 million smallholder farmers right now benefiting from this technology. And India is the fastest uh, technology uh, uh, beneficiary right now. Okay. So there's clear um, benefits. Why would people be using them if there was all these controversies? There are controversies, but there are letters, there is adoption, there are benefits to, to the farmer, there's benefit to consumers. Otherwise, how would they be increasing? This technology increases 15% uh, every year. How would it be going like that if there was no benefits? Nyangaka, your view, overall view on this, I mean, it's obviously a, a very controversial topic, and I must say I, I would not be happy uh, uh, ingesting GM foods, genetically modified foods that could perhaps change the DNA structure of foods, which then could also contaminate uh, your um, stomach. You, there's so many things that could happen and could go wrong, and there are reports of things going wrong.
Yeah, look, I mean, Eleni, I think at the end of the day, it, it really is a question of giving consumers information to be able to make uh, smart decisions. And I think that that is, you know, one particular area that we haven't seen a lot of emphasis, frankly, from a governmental perspective. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, though, I mean, the real question that, uh, you know, folks like Dr. Wambugu and governments across Africa really need to answer is how do you change these negative perceptions to the man and woman in the street around GM, uh, genetically modified foods. And I think that's still an outstanding Well, question. it's interesting to note because South Africa is, of course, one of the, the, the eighth largest uh, producer of genetically modified corn. And only recently um, has there been news that we're going to start seeing the GM label on a lot of the products. And, of course, that's with the new Consumer Protection Act. So a lot of South Africans have been using these products without actually being aware of it. And it's the same, you know, frankly, what you're just talking about is the same information benefit that consumers in Europe and consumers in the U.S. actually have had for many years um, around GM food. And, you know, it is, I think it's part of what is actually needed from an information perspective to actually help consumers in Africa enable them to actually make the same type of disinformed decisions. Mm. Florence, your last word on this. I mean, I just mentioned the Consumer Protection Act in South Africa. We know that government has also been uh, very cautious about labeling the food, uh, the GM food uh, as well. Do you think that's a good move? Do you think that consumers should be aware of uh, the products that they're using? Well, let me tell you that the first product that was commercialized in Europe, in UK, was a tomato that was uh, the flavor saver, which was uh, genetically modified to improve uh, ripening characteristics. And it was labeled. And by the way, the consumers were aggressively buying it until an anti-GM lobby group started telling the consumers that in this tomato, there is danger, there are allergies, there are toxins and fear mongering. And that's the way the, 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 uh, the companies removed it, the food uh, company removed it from the shelf. So it was labeled and there was balanced information. People are truly allowed to choose and they were not cheated or lied to and told they are toxins, the allergies, all that. I think it would be a very fair, very fair thing to, uh, to, to label because people need to know. But they should also not be lied to, now number one. Number two, I think it's very important that we trust our regulatory system. The reason why so many things have gone wrong and, and we can't say the model, European model is the one we should adopt is because lack of trust in the regulatory system, which is government driven, has made these uh, products very, very expensive because then you have to enroll a very, very high regulatory system that may be uh, just being done because, and then you find only big companies can afford it. And then finally, uh, uh, publicly funded projects do not get, in, uh, do not get in sufficient funds to, lead, to be able to commercialize what they have been doing at the university has been doing in the research stations like CSIR or ERC, the Cali, the what, because of the very, very high cost, have been, the bar has been raised very, very high. So you'll find only big companies can afford the regulatory system, and that is one way to keep everybody else out. And of course, then thanks to the people who are raising unnecessarily, um, unnecessarily uh, a bar to say, to say, let's do more and more and more to keep the products of the market. And that's the way that most like the regulatory system has, has, has behaved in Europe. We've been more and more to make sure that you keep the products out. Now, should we be doing the same in Africa? If we need the product, we need to regulate it enough to ensure the products are safe, not to regulate it enough to keep them out of the market. We need a balance. And uh, if we have good, if we trust our government to regulate the drugs, we yeah. trust our government to regulate the products, why can't we trust them to regulate the foods?